Shati Shandarva Bakata Ishantam Papakati and Shantam Babayara Katiadia. Ushakapa Hishaka Hudala in an anon leash than a mamma my shadow of a little baby. Shati Shantarva Bakadiara Shariaria. Uta Tata Hukaka Hudana is so good. Excellent. Okay. Um... Please go and check out my Telegram channel. Uh, the link is below because that's where you're going to be able to get all the extra detail that you can't get here. I'll see you there. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Alexander Quinn, and it's been um, it's been uh, well, I think it's been eight months, nine months since I had Linda Good McGillis on. Um, so many of you have wanted to have her back on. Um, I have finally um, given in to all the requests. We are here. We're going to be talking about um, lots of different things. Um, many of you will know that me and um, Linda have pretty straight talking, transparent conversations. You know, uh, Linda certainly does not beat around the bush. She tells it straight, but that's why people love her. Um, and uh, Linda, I have to say, you're looking fabulous today, darling. Thank you. You're looking pretty spiffy there too handsome thank you very much thank you very much um and um so uh just just before we we get into anything that we're going to talk about um we're going to be talking about march we're going to be talking about a few things so we're going to try and have some fun you know there is um some serious things that we are going to be talking about but but people haven't seen you for eight or nine months certainly not on my channel um and 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 um just you know basically how have you been I've been fantastic. There, we have so much going on at the ranch, and we're getting ready to start a huge um, self-sustaining ecosystem. So, you know, a lot of people are saying I'm missing in action. No, <laughs> just everything is rapidly going forward and in great manifestation. And you know, it's just it's magical, and it's you know. It, there's obstacles as with anything you know but we've been leaping and bounding forward lovely and i just want to give a quick shout out to all the haywards heath people that came to our, our fabulous uh, get together um in august last year so if you're watching a big shout out um and um linda i mean I, when we uh, on our pre-chat because we always have a pre-chat before we were going on and we were having a bit of a chat about you know what we might address today and and you were saying that something that was on your mind was um to do with march um which is just around the bend um, Happy march. today is march 1st oh yeah 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 of course it's today isn't it of course yeah God, i've been so mad with everything i've forgotten i mean I mean, I talked a little bit about um, March with Pam Gregory, but um, I have a feeling this is going to be a fascinating conversation because, when, you know, when, when you and me get together, you know, we're, we're going a bit more galactic. Uh, yeah, more cosmic. I mean, I mean, I mean ju just, I mean, in a nutshell, I mean, I mean, I mean, ju I mean, what are your, what are your thoughts on March? I mean, where, where do you, where do you think it's all going? I mean, I'm certainly where. I mean, it's some pretty major change. The equinox, right around the equinox, we're going into a massive transcendental shifting. And what so many forget to keep in the forefront is this is the dark night of the world soul for the next couple of years. And so everything is still through the linear human mind. Everything is still very personal and it's, if you can let go of it being about the individual, what put us in density is individualism. And that individualism is really hard to release and to surrender. And this month of March, because the world soul consciousness is really what is shifting, and we are just being conduits to assist in releasing the dense energies. That's not personal. And so anything that comes up because the mind seems so personal and can only decipher through its own limitation, 
this is where you see most of this separation. And right now we're walking through a whole lot of truth and untruth and standing your power. And, and what people don't understand, it is, has nothing to do with out here. They think they have to pull their stand in their power, stand in their truth, take their power back from someone or something. And so March is going to provide the opportunity for people to really release that individualism and to step into being a unique expression. But a unique expression is not personal. It's truly surrendering your individualism and, and allowing the innate to live and speak and be and take action. And so in, in a society that has lived by limitation of using their free will and their action behavior is action this civilization has lived by a noun cult of personality and free will has been dumbed down if you will to being about nouns form of any kind and so free will is not a noun it is an action it is a verb if you will which is an action and so changing that mental cognitive thought process and expanding it to where everything is built from within which is action will is not an easy feat to do and so march is going to provide that opportunity to really shift your mental thought process and with that comes bullying spiritual bullying government bullying anything that puts any narrative into an either or of any kind opinion is the greatest battle and and unfortunately as this civilization starts to shift our consciousness and awake, especially those in an awakening community, they have a tendency to put their opinion and, and jump to conclusions and assumptions as being a personal truth. And, and so this is the battle that we face on all faucets, on all petals of the flower right now. And March is going to, again, really bring it to the surface and so anything that has masks on it any one anything any narrative any story that has a mask on it or has a narrative to it that is based on only from the mentality rather than than a full a full molecular structure of information this is the year of deconstruction and and what does that mean it's also the year of the miracle again it's a you know you got two sides of the coin all all simultaneously and so as consciousness transcends what is really going to start to be rebuilt through march and go through throughout the year is Gaia is not a planet. People refer to Gaia as Mother Earth, Mother Nature. And both of those are dumbed down versions. And if you take it back to the beginning of the creational story, not just what you guys have been told and think is the beginning, but if you take it back to the Polarians and, and, and before the first root race, Gaia meant life, a life force energy. And so in the ancient Egyptian mythology, she was classified and limited down to being Mother Nature. And then it, through the Roman Greco and the Greek periods, it became Mother Earth. And when you understand that truly this is a shift of consciousness, that means you have the opportunity to rise above even the stories of planetary star systems and truly go back to just source information. And so it's really gonna start to, have you ever heard the phrase, oh, it's just my nature. 
<laughs> uh, mostly when I lived in the States in Nashville, not so much uh, in the UK. Okay, well, when you look at that phrase, it's just my nature, that is talking about an essence, a life force energy, rather than a planet, rather than something physical out here called nature. And so that is really going to, to really start surfacing as more of these lower realm information keeps being released and unveiled and revealed. Anything man-made has to be deconstructed. But what people don't realize is they take that literal, oh, God, we're going to, Linda is predicting doomsday and everything else. Linda, don't predict anything because I don't deal with the literal world like people take it. I'm talking outside that energy is coming in and how it's going to shift. And when you look at the nature of us, the nature of us is what has been enslaved and trapped by our own mentality and and so the beautiful thing about this is that's what is going to shift as consciousness shifts for me i don't look at things through an individual lens and i drive a lot of people crazy because i don't <laughs> and when i say i am transcending in march of this year I'm talking about the world soul. And when you guys really take your individualism and your own personal truths and it being your personal journey, and you really take it back to what it is, a cosmic story of the world soul is what is ascending. And we're inside that, if you will. You know, people think we have consciousness. No, we don't. Consciousness is not inside of us. We are inside consciousness. And that's a tough one for star seeds and light workers to really cognitively process. <laughs> and when you really understand a higher informational truth, I don't like the word truth, because again, people have been enslaved by definition. And what truth means to 1,500 other people is a whole, each one of them have a different definition than what I say truth is. So when I'm talking a higher informational consciousness and in that we are inside consciousness. It's not consciousness inside us. And when you can process that, you understand that this is not personal. And when you can release that individualism, that's when you're really truly going to be given the cognitive understanding, the inner knowing, and you be, you allow yourself to just become that conduit and just let the energy flow through you. And, you know, another thing that March is going to bring, and I think it's completely, completely miraculous, is people are really going to start seeing after the equinox a shifting in their consciousness that humans have fallen into a mentality and morality of playing God rather than knowing God. And the mind plays God. The heart knows God. And that is the difference between individualism and truly somebody that embodies a higher consciousness. And it's not about secular, secular, putting yourself into another little bubble. Oh, I'm too sensitive to the world. The whole point is, is if you're truly here with the underglow of light, your light sphere will protect you. And so you don't have to keep yourself away from the world. We inherit the earth. We are not going home to anywhere. And a lot of people think they're transcending out of earth, back to their home planets, not understanding that earth is your home planet and everything is, again, inside her consciousness. So... 
that is going to really, really help this civilization that's transcending of consciousness. And it's going to shift big. And it's either going to put people, they're either going to continue to step into the madness of their mind, or they're going to release themselves from that imprisonment and truly embrace their heart, which knows source, which knows God, which knows creator, rather than playing God. And when you truly know creator, know source, you have nothing to prove anymore. And right now there's a whole lot of star seeds and light workers that are trying to still prove that they're aware, that they're awakened. And, and again, when you have that battle of right and wrong, a whole lot of bullying comes out of it. And so you're really going to see it in the governments play out all over the world. You're really going to start seeing it in the societal ways rather than just it being a bunch of us awakening or becoming aware or there is enough momentum now that it's it's really going to shift the whole civilization's thought process rather than just the three or four million so-called star seeds or light workers and so it's exciting doesn't feel like it but as long as the chaos is out here you know it's been released from within and that is always a great sign when you see chaos out here not that people like it <laughs> <laughs> I love the chaos. As long as it's out here and it's not inside of me, I'm great. <laughs> Doesn't always feel good. I um, I put out a post recently, uh, which was one of my um, uh, tough love posts. Uh, by your standards, it would be uh, probably um, designated normal, but um, uh, which is why I love you. But um. You know, I was saying, you know, you know, going into a new sun world, you know, if, 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 if we don't start stepping into the surrender and we go into the mind, this is where the star seeds start to malfunction. You know, do you want to say something about that? You know, more and more, you're going to see that short circuiting. And especially on social media. Why social media? Because somebody can put up, I can, I can write something on my wall. And there will be a bunch that will come and they'll say, I disagree, I this, this is bypassing, this is this, this is that. What is not taken into consideration, especially by the awakening communities, is they have knowing that everybody's at a different frequency. That majority have knowing that everybody walks through their records differently, processes it differently. They do not take into consideration that when they go to defend their belief systems. And, and I told this lady, I don't care if you disagree with me or not. It just shows your own bipolarism you haven't neutralized yet. But the fact remains that are, there are people out here that know more than you. And there's people out here that know more than me. There's people out here that know more than you, Alex. And no one keeps that opened mind when it comes to information. And they mix opinion with information. And that's why stuff gets distorted. And the more you, the heart is emotionally neutral because the soul don't choose in either or. The mind is going to play God. You're right and I'm wrong. Or I'm wrong and you're right, Alex. It's going to always be in a battle of agreement and disagreement with something. And as long as you have that in your mentality, you are not here. I love it when people say, no offense, Linda. Well, you're already in a space of distortion. You come at me with no offense, Linda, <laughs> which means you're already offended. That, And I don't care. You're offended. It doesn't make you right. And that is the battle that has been happening for thousands of years is based on opinions and jump to conclusions and the heart is emotionally neutral the mind will generate again play god the heart navigates and maneuvers through the bipolar polarity on the stool plane of existence 
And you can step out of duality and exist on a dual plane of existence in an emotionally neutral space. Because as long as you're emotional, you cannot make wise choices. And that's why it is so important to go back to being emotional and neutral. But even on information, people don't pause first. They automatically want to battle. And that's going to be really critical going forward. Because out here is going to provide you all information from all possibilities. Go on Google. You can Google something and Google is going to give you the whole range of answers, whether you label it good or negative, positive or evil, whatever it is. And then Google's leaving you to determine what is truthful information. And because people look at things, have you ever heard of mirror work? I've heard of it. Okay. It's really encouraged. I'm the one that says do the same thing. I think, I think the, fir the first time I heard about mirror work was someone called Teal Swan along the years ago. Um, she was talking about it. And, and mirror work is really good when you know how to do it. And the reason I bring mirror work up is I'm going to use it as an example. People say, she, look into the mirror, stare into the mirror, blah, 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 blah. But the limit, linear limited of the mind, you look in the mirror, you're looking at the mirror, at what it's showing you about your physical, whether it's your hair, whether it's your face, your teeth, whatever it is. And the thing with mirror work is you have to look in the mirror, not look at it. And again, that's what March is going to give opportunity for to really perceive through instead of just the this, this straight ski screen, when you look at it or look at this screen, look at the world. If you're here and you look out, you will be able to see through. And you're going to be able to use your etheric eyesight to see through the cube rather than just one side of it, the flat screen. And that's the beauty of, of this equinox and leading up to it. Now, I can say this, especially this next week. But if, if you can go the full, it, to create a new habit, a new way of being, of doing things, it takes 21 days. It takes 18 days to create a habit. It takes 21 days to completely overwrite it and to form a new one. And these next three weeks are miraculous if you can truly get out of the mind, surrender it, and get here and let this tell you what it wants to manifest. Not what fits into your lifestyle now. Not what fits into your spirituality now, none of that. But to really bring the feeling to what you want to see as your ultimate ascended life. And this is a great time to, instead of you being in control, saying, oh, I am going to alchemize, I am going to manifest this, I want a million dollars and I'm going to manifest it. That strictly is your limited human. And when you can surrender that control of what you think you want and order from the universal menu, and that's what you're doing these next three weeks is literally whether you're doing it consciously or unconsciously, you are ordering off of the universal men menu and when i say that i'm not saying okay universe i want a 1996 chevy that's red with purple trim and this kind of interior you don't want to get too specific but you don't want to leave it too generalized you want the universe to help you 
So if you say I want a 2033 truck, any color will do, but I prefer neon green, then you're giving the universe much more to work with that can materialize it for you quicker versus you sitting here saying, it has to be this, it has to be this color, it has to have these kind of tires on it. You know what I'm saying? Because the more specific and limited you are, the longer it takes for the universe to manifest your desires and aspirations. And all of those begin with a feeling, not a thought. Thoughts generate, but the feelings is what materializes. And we've been taught that it's not a feeling. So a lot of magical energies are here to really be supportive and give opportunity to shift the frequency of the body, to shift the, again, the first universal law is the law of mentalism. People forget that. They're trapped in their minds. And the greatest gift you can give is really allow this shift in consciousness to permeat the molecular structure because that's what's being deconstructed. It's not out here. This follows. Anything man-made is being deconstructed and that man-made is from the thought process that humans have lived by and why it's the thought process you have to shift. Heal your mind and your world will change. And that's a great, great opportunity this month to really shift to the world soul consciousness to where you don't have a collective that's running through your mind that you think is your thoughts. You have source running through your mind. And that's a tough one to sh surrender to. Oh my God, is it so worth it? <laughs> There's no battle there. I'm telling you, there is no battle. There is no duality. There is no bipolarism there at all. But you have to be willing to give up your personal truth. It's funny you say all that because, you know, again, <clears throat> I was sat at my desk last night at about one, one in the morning. I couldn't sleep and this thing just came at me. So I, I put it out, um, and it was, it was quite quite similar to what you're saying, although um, slightly different, but very much, you know, the, the bit at the end said, oh, there's two timelines. There's, there's, what, there's what you need, and there's what you want. And one you need to surrender into, that'll give you everything you want, and the other won't, because you think it's the other way around. Mm -hmm. And that's the same thing with nice and kindness. Nice, we've been taught to be nice in this world. And nice is fakeness. Nice is putting on a mask when you feel like shit and pretending you're happy and feel great. And kindness truly comes from the heart. It's a whole different thing. And, and, this, and, and the ideas... You know, people think have been taught that love is a feeling. And love is not a feeling. Love is. And why do I say that? Because outside, your light body doesn't have an emotional body. So it's not a feeling. It's not an emotion. Your light body source, it just is love. And, and so, again, this, this next year, you're really going to see the definition of what love is really, really, really shift to love is what we are and our will is our action. Now, you have to understand form, you have to have a structure of form before any life force energy can come into it. And so that's why I say we're deconstructing the molecular structure of information that our vessels and, and this construct has, has been constructed as. 
But again, that's ethric and spiritual. That's the bridge that that y'all have been working towards building the bridge from your mental, emotional, and physical body, bridging it to the spiritual and etheric body, which you have been veiled from. And so this, this binary that we have been entrapped with, it's a very powerful binary code on March 23rd. It's a 32323. And that is powerful and that is magical as far as the molecular structure within it is a deconstruction binary code with any creation there is destruction simultaneously and of course we have not been taught that we have been taught there's a create there's a death and then there's a birth there's a birth and eventually there will be a death and so Everyone wants new earth, the new sun world, the new, 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 but they're not willing to release and surrender and let the death to destruction take place. And that destruction is within us, releasing information of the lower realms and surrendering it. And so... At the same time, you're you're all birthing, you're deconstructing and destroying that which isn't necessary anymore. And so this is a, this is a beautiful, beautiful month of change, and all change starts within first. So, you know, I've I've had a lot of people, even comments on your videos, of people saying, "Well, none of the stuff you guys are talking about is happening," because they're trying to make it literal and this is a cosmic story of consciousness evolving which is unseen which is inside and 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 you cannot put into literal or limited literacy something that is this big humans have tried their whole lives to 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 shove 50 pounds of shit in a five pound bag and and you can't do it. You just got to get a bigger bag. <laughs> you know what I mean? And so as, as the spiritual and etheric bodies really, really manifest into, into that vesica Pisces, into that merging, it has to come together. So it, that merging, so there can be an emergence. And so this is going to throw us into full force of the emergence. But at, but what's going to be dominant to the mentality is the destruction. And, and that's why I say this month really, it really allows you to see through the mirror instead of just looking at it. Because for the humans, they don't see the reflection. Because they're too busy looking at the messenger instead of looking through. And the world's going to start to know God, source, creator, spirit again in a whole different way. If they can surrender the individuality and their definitions of the cult of personality. You know. I tell you what, they'll see it. They'll see a cosmic dance like they've never seen before if they can surrender. And the Kundalini is going to start shooting up. Now, I will say this on the detrimental side. You know, when it, we just went through a huge circuitry upgrade, we're going to go through another one here in six days. Um, and then two weeks later, we're going to go through another one. And then towards the end of March, we're going to go through an even bigger one after the equinox. And these circuitry upgrades, they, they take your what people call ascension symptoms, and it times it by like a couple thousand. <laughs> Remember, you're trying to, we're in the process of upgrading the cellular molecular structure from Homo sapien to homo luminous. 
And in order to do that, you have to bring a lot more light into the cellular molecular structure. And when you do that, form what follows form, function. So your mind dictates your body's functions. Let me ask you something. Let me mess with your mind. You've been messing with my mind since the day we met. What's changed? How do you know you have organs inside your body? Uh, usually when something goes bump in the night or... Uh... Because you've been told you have organs. Your parents told you you have a liver, you have a gallbladder. Doctors have told you. Your sciences in school have told you that. Yes. That is correct, yeah. All, all the institutions... Okay. Have well, a light body doesn't have organs. So a whole lot of beliefs of what, again, you're going into a light body. So all of the beliefs of stuff that you have, organs that you have that, and I understand science can prove it. I'm telling you, this universal matrix can prove anything you believe or not believe. But what was true for a homo sapien form in these realms is not accurate for a light body. And so you have a whole molecular structure restructuring itself through circuitry upgrading, through the whole nervous system, everything. And that is not easy on the body. So yes, there's going to be a lot of short circuiting because one, people can't handle pain and pain only exists in the fourth dimensional astral plane and lower. There's going to be a lot of people that are not going to be able to transcend past the highest, <clears throat> excuse me, frequency of the fourth dimension. And then there'll be a lot that will. And so it's really a matter of balance as the veil is removed and you see what has always been here that you haven't able, been able to see. And that shocks the psyche. And the reason we've been doing this in baby steps is so there was not trauma, even more trauma done to the psyche. And so there's going to be a lot of short circuiting because people are not going to be able to handle the discomfort as we go into more and more circuitry upgrading. And, and this is going to happen for, for the rest of the year. Two and three times a month, you're, we're going to go through a circuitry upgrade because we have to match as the consciousness shifts. And she is shifting rapidly. You know, the magnetic reversal and the pull shift are two very different things. One deals with an etheric pull, and one deals with a geographical pull in the physical. And if you want to perceive a new world, you have to be willing to change your perception. And the only way you can change your perception of what you see out here is to shift the consciousness. And until that consciousness is allowed to shift out of all faucets of the inversion, we will continue to walk through the distortion out here. But at the same time, Guy has taken over. And she's saying, I am no longer going to claim ownership that i am a planet that i am limited to just what they physically see out here she's a life force consciousness and so she's going to force a whole lot this month and out here you have to have the land changes to match your guys's internal consciousness versus the limitation of the limited perception that we have adopted and have lived by. And so it's really, really going to shift a lot. 
It may not feel comfortable. It may not appear very good in the beginning, but again, there's what is known as cause and effect and consequences and results. And you have to walk through all four of those causes, what generates it from here. Effect is, is what is the result of your perception and the consequences is, is what is played out. And the result is at the end when you deal with your consequences. And so the mind, you're also going to really, really see after the end of March. And this is what I'm excited about is in more instant manifestation. That's what I was about it's to come easy. on. But, but, but and, and people are probably going to go bonkers for getting me to, to stopping you at this moment of time. But we will we will come out. But, but instant manifestations in both ways. In both ways. And you're really going to see people out here that bully, that want to keep this battle of truths and thinking standing in their power is being vindictive and hating and and all of those things that come 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 with it you're really going to see that that is going to no longer affect those of us that truly are here um and there's a lot of people that are convinced they're here and are still out here hating being vindictive and uh, sadly, you see that a lot in the spiritual awakening. You know, they just think they're better than everybody. And it's okay that they go out and they just sit there and spew that people are evil, people are dark, people are this. And, and that kind of hate and bullying, you're really going to see when they, they continue to do it. It's going to start materializing in their own life. And... And, and whether they recognize it as their own intention right there back in their face. Because what is happening, as much as we're expanding into a unified consciousness, if you will, at the same time, going into that macro singularity, at the same time, the micro individual bubbles are either going to trap them in that and they're going to keep circling in their own battle and everything else is going to be protected from it. Or they're going to expand and they're going to see what they're doing and change, if you will. So it's going to go either way. It's going to manifest. You're really going to see in your governments the masks that come off. And when I say masks that come off, you're going to start seeing them turning on each other, even those of their own party. And, and this, have you ever heard this, the phrase, keep your enemies close? You're going to see that that's really the masks that have been put on. That there's been a lot of them that have kept their enemies close, not for the sake of controlling them, but to expose them. And so what a lot of people think is the truth and, and they think they got it figured out with conspiracy theories and this, that, and the other, they're going to find even those were limited in information. And the only way you will ever have a, 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 a larger truth, if you will, is when you have it all laid out on the line, both negative and positive of, of, what people call light and what people call dark, what people call the past and what people call the future, all of it rounded out. And you're really going to see that come, come to the surface now. Why? Because as much as people are waking up and, oh, I'm this embodiment, I'm that embodiment, I'm this God, I'm this goddess, I'm this priest, I'm this deity, they're going to come that even that was distorted. And, and when they realize that they have trapped themselves in a past record, how many people have past life regression, QHHTs, and find out that there are all these, these past deities, and they turn around and they claim it. They change their name on social media to <clears throat> all of these fluffy, angelic, ascended master names. <laughs> And all they did was trap themselves by their own free will, intention, and motivation into those past records instead of allowing themselves to be new, instead of allowing themselves to be in the now. 
which the new creation has nothing to do with any of those stories. It's why I've said you don't need to know. They're not going to serve you going forward. There is no information <clears throat> that any of us can channel, can remember, can whatever label you give it. Evolve to, there is none of that information. Once you become aware of information, it is no longer needed. And to become definitionalists is not easy for people. Well, it's not easy for, for, for the mind. Not at all. And I'm very good at being definitionalist. You know, I drive these guys crazy. Oh, yeah? <laughs> oh, yeah. No, you're attached to a definition. No wonder you're suffering right now. <laughs> Linda, can't you feel sorry for me? I know I sure can't. I can offer you empathy, but I don't feel sorry for you. Nope. <laughs> I told you to master your mind. <laughs> So a, a lot of people, I, I, I'm, I'm making an educated guess here, um, but a lot of people who watch this are going to say, Linda, how do I make sure I stay out of the mind this month? You know, that's the hardest thing for, that's the only thing you guys need to do is learn to master your mind. When you truly or, or should I or should we say the AI? The AI, yes. And when you understand that your mind has all the thoughts that have been put into it by seven and a half seemingly million humans, that it's a quantum field and it just cycles through. So even though you maybe you wake up and you have, oh, I'm a piece of shit today right? That thought pops into your head. Now you can either attach to it. Yep. That's why I feel so achy and everything. Yep. Or you can just, yeah, okay, whatever. Keep moving on. You don't need to be in my mental, mental channel. When they understand that we have personalized every thought of a computer program, you know, people talk about the matrix. Let's talk about the matrix movie. Neo realized that he had been trapped in his own individualism, his own mind, and that his body became a Borg, that his body was the only thing in the present trying to figure things out because he was lost in his mind. And when he realized that, he was able to bring himself back into his body and be present, and therefore he could see everything and knew how to maneuver through it. Yes, that's what's happening. We have been disconnected from our bodies because, and our bodies have gone rogue because we haven't been present in them. We've been lost in our mind, daydreaming here or worrying about what somebody did two weeks ago to you or, or, or whatever it is. And you're never going to be able to, to master your mind and get control over it if you're not truly present. And that's tough to do. Because your mind will always take you, oh, I got to do this for next week. I got to do this. I got a plan. I got work to do. I got this. And, and oh, God, so-and-so wants to talk to me about that fight we had 10 years ago or, or whatever it is. And training yourself to be in your body in this moment right now is not easy to do because this demands otherwise. And when you really can become aware of how much the outer world dictates your choices, dictates your mind, dictates your feelings, dictates your emotions, that is the first step, is become aware of how little you're actually present with your body and it just goes through the motions of your day. That is automation. And you're really going to see... It's going to get tougher because there's going to be all these new technologies offering free energy. It's nothing is ever free. Number one, if it tells you it's free energy, that energy has to come from somewhere and there will be a consequence for it. Well, what, so, what about, what about electric cars? Electric cars, they have to run on batteries. Batteries is the one thing that can't be recycled or reused, but yet people are buying into these hybrids, buying into these electric cars Again, 
if you are the light that lights up the consciousness grid that this in order to have this system so we can live and have experience and you understand you are the ones that are lighting it up by the light here why the hell are you going to invent something that's going to keep pulling your light into itself and draining you and draining this grid system and the meridian system of the new world so it's critical thinking and common sense, but we use it to seek truth. We use it to seek research, to convince ourselves. And all you're doing is putting more information that doesn't you don't need. This knows everything. And this will maneuver you through and give you every bit of information you need. And that is going to make going forward even tougher as we get more and more into a technological world. The age of Aquarius is, is all about humanitarian, humanitarianism, but also higher technology. So it always comes simultaneously. It's only the human that will choose and make it an either or. And the second you do that, one becomes a dominant perception and the other becomes subtle. And so the inversion that's taking place is the subtle, which is the unseen, the spiritual etheric bodies. As they merge, that's going to become a dominant sight perception out here. And more and more, the lower realms will become subtle in the background. It doesn't mean... It, you don't, you're not aware it's ha not happening or happening or whatever else. It's just you're changing the dominant of what you mentally perceive. And for those that can't shift that consciousness because they're not here and haven't done that inner work to clear that, to get this to be an emotionally neutral, safe space, that dominant of the good and evil polarity world is going to become more dominant and more is going to be seen from the negative aspect. Am I making sense? It's talking to the converted here. Um, <laughs> You're talking to, but I mean, do you understand what I mean by the difference between the subtle and the dominant? The higher frequency will become more dominant that has been very subtle and vice versa. For those who allow the shifting and the surrendering, and you know, if you can take it back to simplicity, the more words that are attached to a thought, for example, I am hot, right? Humans don't speak like that. Humans speak with a whole bunch of adverbs, adjectives, prepositions, filler words added into it. Oh, oh my God, I am so, so hot, Alex. Oh, oh, I can't survive this heat. Oh my God. Do you see all the emotional force of life force energy that's put to a thought instead of just, I am hot. I need to cool myself and take action. They complicate it. And this is always going to come complicated the more simple you can take it back and take your thoughts back to simplicity you're going to get better control over your your unconscious intention and motivation oh no linda i know i know i manifested this i was here when i manifested okay did you stay there <laughs> or did when things when the obstacles started presenting themselves and a setback did you start going into worry and this, that, or did you stay here? And that's the mastery that has to be. You have to stay in the feeling of the soul that has everything right now. Because that's what's going to materialize any thought you have, any want, need, or desire. And if those want, needs, or desire is built on abandonment, rejection, betrayal, distrust, any of those things that you have created as an individual because you separated yourself from here. 
it's just going to increase exponentially at you. So it's really necessary to learn the difference where you're really just here. And, and here is saying that you're, you have the feeling in the, of the knowing versus truly surrendering to the knowing and letting the soul unfold it. The soul don't need help from the human mind at all. You know, this the human is... mind thinks nothing can live without it. There's a saying, um, which is a slang term that they use on the streets of London in kind of hip hop and R&B and stuff. And they say, um, you've got to check yourself before you wreck yourself. And it's like it's like a music industry time or something, but it's probably quite old. But but I, I check myself before I wreck myself every morning to make sure. Oh, you just do it in the morning. Hell, I do it every day. <laughs> every morning. I do it about 15 times a day. Okay. I'm checking myself. But, I, but, but because things are so fluid at the moment, it really is important to be, I think, constantly checking in, rechecking in. Because I, I get a lot of people that I work with, they say, well, I've been doing this thing for 20 years, or I've been doing this thing, and I've been do, I've been working on my third eye, or I've been working on this thing for the last three months, so it's going to be fine, isn't it? And I keep on saying no. Number one, I get where they're coming from when they say I've been on this journey for 20, 30, 40 years. I totally get it from that angle of mentality, that frequency of that kind of truth. But on a, a higher frequency, it's not possible. And why is it not possible? One, the planet wasn't at a frequency where you could heal certain things until she reached there. Two, there is no you. So if you're the one who's been working on it, you haven't been listening to this anyways, because this is going to be instant. You go into it, you get triggered, and you deal with the trigger. Your body is going to release it in hours, you know, whatever it is, however long it takes for you to let that full emotional record come up and be released from your body. All that emotional suppressed information. It will be over and you feel lighter, but the mind will drag it out. The mind will cry over, oh God, Alex broke up with me. When did Alex break up with you? Oh, last year, and you're still crying over it, <laughs> which means you're not healing. You're generating emotional feeling from thoughts, and you wonder why you go through chaos. And, and that, again, is a big recognition to become aware of, of where your thoughts generate the emotion rather than a feeling you turn into that will bring the accurate emotion and it's all it's it's a control i'm telling you it is all control over the mind and until you can release the emotional attachments that you have generated towards a thought that low opinion of yourself of your mind will not change at all and it will create still create that that unworthiness and that self-hatred within it that is projected out and so it's it's uncomplicating your mind so you can actually get to the true feelings because until you break through the mental body you can't heal the emotional body and that's where all the truth is do you think and this is something I pondered this morning because I remember when I stair stepped from or, or certainly made that transition on the Mayan star calendar and I suddenly Antares suddenly popped up. Do you think March is going to have an effect on the Mayan star calendar for other people? You know, in that sense, because we've already, when you look at the Kabbalah tree of life, and and you see the one, two, three, four, five, eight, seven, six in the middle. That that square there, four, five, seven, eight, six is 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 the veil. 
And for some of you, you are you are moving from here to in the, in the Arcturian, Pleiadian, Syrian aspect. You're moving up into the Antarians and Centaurians in that level. The consciousness of the world soul has merged the two and the three already. The Alpha Mother Galaxy coding and the Omega Father coding. So in that sense, we have shifted above and beyond all planetary construct. Because what you guys call your solar system and your galaxy is not outside of Earth. It is actually inside consciousness. But for the human, they believe it's outside. Now, and our consciousness is in their body. Now, remember, consciousness is not in you. You are in actual consciousness. Which is which it's, is why which is why when you say that when you go out into space, you 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 can't see all the stars the way that you can when you're within. Well, let's not get into flat Earth and, and spherical Earth, but but but, but when you're well, they're both when, accurate. When looking up. You know, you can't go with just one or just the other. Because just like you, you have a toroidal field, just like this construct, it has it has a magnetic field. So it's both. It's flat disc existential disc planes within a sphere. And again, you have to simpl simplify everything to, to its basics. And as we shift in that... You know, as we shift to to the higher broadband frequency, it's a different world, but it's not a different world. And everybody's expecting this one just to die and instantly be in a new world, not understanding we're sh we're merging and shifting this with her higher self, if you will, that she's been separated from. And I'm not sure how to answer it without it having a linear context to it. But is this? Uh, do you want to get um our um Michael in again? Yes. Do you remember? Do you remember last time we were in that restaurant? Yeah. You and I were having breakfast at, at the airport, and you and you had this problem last time. You're like, I might have to get um, an angel involved, and I don't want to well, do, that, but I'm going to have to do this. English words are so hard to to really truly convey truly a, a higher information that that cannot really be perceived, and. When you, it's all about learning how the matrix works. And you guys are going from a belief system that there's a universal matrix and there's not. The only matrix that exists is the individual ones of your guys' minds, of our minds. And this doesn't truly have a construct. This doesn't have planetary guardians. This doesn't have. Elohim guardians. This doesn't have star system guardians. And so the opportunity on the galactic cosmic side of things, because we have merged past the the con world soul consciousness has merged past that and has already come back into her full unification. That is why this month is going to be so exponentially important because it's going to force. Remember, your inside consciousness and consciousness is already at a higher level. And this is going to force the merging of the spiritual etheric bodies for those who are ready for it. And because there's enough ready for it, whether or not they can handle it, this whole different ball game. But because there's enough at a frequency that... Okay, liken it like this. In the linear world, in your guys' world right here, 
three days is equivalent to 72 hours. Outside of your skin suits, those three days are equivalent to 10,000 light years. So your soul is spinning, spiraling, cycling, whatever you want to call it, at a much faster rate than your human vessel. And we are now merging that molecular structure to amp up you catching up with consciousness is speed rather than your limited human speed. So will it still be perceived that three days is 72 hours to your human? Absolutely. But at the same time, it's going to seemingly feel like everything is moving faster when in all actuality, it is moving slower. Do you understand what I'm saying? So in other words, we are catching up with galactic time. Cosmic time. You go, you go through human time, then galactic time to cosmic time. And because so many of you have been in the, cos the galactic aspect of time, if you will, we're ready to move now into cosmic time. Because even galactic star systems, now remember, we're going back to source. That means there's none of those stories of star systems either. Once you're at source, zero point. Do you understand what I mean? Mm -hmm. So even though you have all those experiences, you have all those memory records, blah, 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 you're given the opportunity to evolve past that back to the solar aspect of yourselves. Now, many will not go past, like I said, the, the highest level of the fourth dimensional astral plane. Another group will go past that, but they will not be able to go past the planetary aspects fully, the galactic aspects, because that's the world they want to be in. And then there's others that will evolve past the planetary guardians and the Elohim guardians, which is the next level above the planetary. And, and you know, and some will get, some will stay there and the very few will actually go past that just because that was, that's just been the agreement of, of these realms. Very few are actually ready to go and, and learn the solar guardian aspects. So in that, you're going to see in the next few years more and more people coming into, into the narratives of, of learning that, again, frequencies of, of truths about UFOs, about aliens, about extraterrestrials. And at the same time, they're going to have to walk through all those stories that we've been enslaved, that we've been this, we've been that, which is not accurate. It's accurate only for those stair steps. But again, the higher stair steps that people choose to go through, they will see more and more and more. And that's going to neutralize a lot of the fear-based narratives and frequencies of the lower realms as we merge it into the angelic galactic civilization, if you will. So it's not that we're going anywhere. We inherit the earth. And, and what that means is it's not like there's 15 other new Earths. It's your perception that will change, that will allow you to see a new version of Earth, if you will. There's a, there's a huge, huge difference between being a unique expression of source, meaning source is coming through you, living at through you, versus our individual interpretation of what it should be. And this will be a lot easier, truly, if you can become a master of what thoughts you focus on. Because as we break through 
with a greater percentage of those becoming aware as we break through the barrier from the fourth dimensional highest frequency of the fourth dimensional into the fifth dimensional frequent broadband frequency. This is where you're going to, to really see where the challenges are in humanity and that surrendering. And it's not, oh, they're low vibes, let them just spiral and stuff like that. That's where every one of us that actually has an embodied awareness, not just have awareness and able to talk about it and write about it, that's just your mental body, but who actually know source, not still walking through the stair steps and, and yet still battling the polarity, but actually embody and, and knowing source you're really going to see them come more out into the physical world and leave social media because they're going to take ownership of their physical rather than connecting through virtual reality, which is how so many have been doing for the last 10 years as the web assisted in connection, if you will. And, and so more and more of us are going to be taken away, guided away from social media and to actually build in the physical because you're anchoring the higher world into a physical form, structure. And that's really going to be where your power lies now. Mm. Not creating <clears throat> businesses to help people awaken or to heal them because, again, for those that are truly here, you don't need any of those modalities in the higher frequencies. But in, in essence, is, it, it's almost like um, getting closer to Pleiadian culture, the, you know, starting more that kind of um, how they live. For some, yes. For the majority of the others, they're going to move away. The Pleiadians have stepped back. The Pleiadians have been responsible for a lot of this. And even though there has been many of them that have redeemed and returned to the light, again, it's a lower frequency part of these world stories, not your higher frequency worlds. And, and again, you look at the Kabbalah tree, Mayan, what you were talking about, again, the Pleiadians are down here on, on those realms, those and and we're ascending above that will they still assist absolutely are they i'm not saying they're malevolent or benevolent i'm just saying they have played a different role than what many people have been channeling and and we are actually as a world soul she is leaving behind the guardianship of the arcturians the pleiadians and the syrians which made up the elohim and so she no longer needs, and this civilization no longer needs those guardianships, those planetary guardianships, because you don't have those planetary guardianships in the higher dimensional frequencies. You live in unification without the planetary guardians. I'm glad, so, you, I'm glad you said that, because I put out in a video recently, um, I was saying our, our Palladian brothers and sisters will now step back. And that's the very, very same thing I said. And if you remember what I, what I shared with you when we were in Glastonbury, when you had your, your beautiful, beautiful experience with the ship. Oh, my God, that was crazy. Should we, should we just quickly share what happened? You can, yeah. Just hold on, let me finish. If you remember, I told you the Arcturian aspect of you, you no longer need, you're going to go into a higher connection. Um, and that's why, because you're rising above those planetary guardians and, and you have graduated past them. And that's what you're going to really see a lot who allow it to, re, to, to evolve beyond the guardianship of the Syrians, of the Pleiadians and the Arcturians. So now tell them your experience. It was magical. Well, I think magical is um, probably a bit of an understatement, but I mean, we were standing up looking at a ship in the sky, having just come down from the tour. And you said, 
kind of like my my kind of like my galactic mom my you know because because some people kind of enjoy that dynamic between us like uh what well, that mom or like kind of auntie um uh linda and uh and and um alex kind of vibe and we were stood there and he said oh it's just sexual oh totally oh yeah completely yeah, yeah i'm just kidding our, our relationship is, is nothing but sexual but but um <laughs> But but you said to me, um, you said, Alex, look up at the ship. You can see the ship, can't you? I was like, I can see it. I can see it. You're like, Alex, focus in on the ship and get the download. Okay. I was like, right. I'm doing it. I'm doing it. I'm getting tingles now. But when the download came, I mean, you know the story, but boof. And I knew all about the physics of the crafts and how it worked and everything. It was like a boom. instantly, instantly, boom. It was crazy, and it was so much. And you know, Alex had to talk about it and process. It and it's like, yep. Yeah. And he's like, "Am I crazy?" No. And and even for a week afterwards, it was still, yeah. You know, and, and then it gets to be too much, and then your human has to back off. Yeah. And, and, and it, you know, and then it processes some more and that dance. It was incredible what you got. It was beautiful. It was incredible. And you can, every star in the sky is an experience of information. It doesn't matter what fractal of us have, have it has experienced it. But you can tune into it because, again, every star is a ship and every ship represents an experience. Relationship. You have you relate to it. And you can, exactly like I said, instead of looking at it, oh, I see a ship, Linda. Okay, look into it, which is exactly what you did. And if if... You do that practice, and when I say you, I'm talking in generality, or you as an individual. If you do that, you can, just like Neo in the Matrix, it's instant. Okay, definitely. Because this is a miraculous system, and this is who you have claimed identity to, and that is not your identity. You are consciousness. And, and so the more you can take yourself and embodying that I am consciousness and let the individual emotional attachment to this being who you are. This becomes your star system. This becomes your galaxy. And, and in that you can tune into any information if it's outside of you and you're perceiving it, look into it because you're looking into part of your cellular molecular construct within yourself. As within, so without. And so you were able to pull all that information instantly. And this is what I say if you guys master this and truly can live here with no definitions, no identity, every moment, every day being brand new, with just seemingly similarities of the day before, your bed being in the same place, whatever. And and you start seeing this out here as a messenger, whether it's above, whether it's below the sky, the the water, an animal, you can tune into it rather than just witnessing it or looking at it. And the second you can you put yourself in it, the second you have all the information. And then you can move forward now. And for you, you moved on to the Ontarian level. And then you came back to the Arcturian. And then, you, you know, until you're comfortable with all that information, you're ready to fully tune in like you did with the Arcturian and got it all. And that's beautiful. You had an amazing experience. That's what it was like for my walk-in. Only it wasn't just one petal of it it was the whole thing mm. instantly <clears throat> and texas has never been the same the world has never been the same. <laughs> and when you in, we're one consciousness and that's truly where our power is is surrendering to that consciousness 
that's where you know source you know god and you stop playing it because it's just not important to play it anymore because the magic and power is with that knowing and letting the knowing show you how to maneuver through the chaos out here of polarity it's a powerful month for those of us that truly can surrender surrender from playing god and it being all about what we want in our life and focusing only on our journey to really surrendering to it being what it truly is the world soul consciousness going through her evolution it's you're going to see miracles unfold more and more but if, if for the individual that cannot surrender to the fact that there there is no them that there is only source working through every one of us and that's has no definition it's for those they can't life is going to get maddening because yeah, they're not going to get their way so i'm trying to enlighten people too but some people don't like it um, no, they don't like it and they're going to keep battling and i'm going to keep patting them on the back saying you're doing a great job keep going because <laughs> I'm not playing your game. You go battle with yourself. Would you like to um, finish on a uh, bit of a, um, a bit of bit of, bit of some some light language codes from from your only if you sing for us. Uh, sing in light language. Sure. I keep telling. For all of you watching, I keep telling Alex, his forte is not in writing a book. His forte truly is in singing. If you guys have not been privileged to listen to Alex sing, he is phenomenal. Whether that is him just singing a song or singing in a light language, I'm telling you, he's powerful. And he's just beautiful when he does it. I, I tell you what, I can um, sing light language over stairway, stairway to Heaven. How about that? Perfect. Let's see. Here we go. I have to bring it in. Okay. And the gushing and a one and the high and double cut and dish and tiger, oh, I am a intati high nashak and get dish and double pressure and How's that? Beautiful. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, yeah, well, don't worry. I am starting a, a second music channel, so um, so yeah, so so I I don't worry about it. Some of that would be correct, but I um I uh, yeah, I mean, I love to sing like language. Um, I, I don't do it, you know, publicly very often, but uh, it's beautiful to sing. I mean, it actually sings better than than English sometimes. Yes. And you do amazing at it. I'm your number one fan. Well, how about how about how about you sing some light language now? No, I'm not very good at singing. That's <laughs> you guys know. I'm not good. I'm not very good at singing. That's your gift, but I can speak it. <laughs> um, you know, we 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 um we we can always do this again soon. So I I have an engagement tonight. So I I I'm. I'm going to have to shoot, but, you know, we, you and I always, we always have fun talking and, you know, it's always great. And, um, and I'm, I'm going to sign off. I'm going to say bye. Thank you for today. Thank you. sweetie. And, um, um, God bless and good luck and Godspeed everybody. Yeah, absolutely. And keep dancing. It doesn't have to be as detrimental as it may appear. <laughs> so hand in hand, we got this. And I'm going to come back and see you overseas. Good. I, I hope so. <laughs> so much love, so many blessings. Let's keep dancing. Okay. Over and out from us. Goodbye.